let's talk about Cadena and let's talk about why the industry continues to doubt Cadena's ability to scale even after it's been proven. I'd like to play a clip from the 2019 Blockchain for Business MIT conference. Before I'd let the clip play, I'd like to give you guys a little backstory on who is Monica Quaitens, who has played a monumental role in the early stages and development at Cadena. At Cadena, she used to lead research and networks. She is a former tech lead and senior data engineer at Rent to Runway and a former quantitative analysis engineer at the SEC. Prior to that, as an investment banker associate, Monica secured and restructured commercial real estate assets at Crushman and Wakefield. Monica has a degree in statistics and probability, as well as economics from Columbia University. She is also co-founder of Universal Consensus, a blockchain-focused pro-diversity organization. So to say that Monica is way overqualified to talk on the subject, I think would be an understatement. And I would also like to point out the fact that look who's on the panel at the Business for Blockchain. You see professors from MIT, you see people from Consensus, you see people from the MIT Association, some of the smartest minds in the world really starting to get attracted to Cadena and what could be possible with the abilities of a blockchain like Cadena. Um, I was taking copious notes while you guys were talking, um, and there are clearly, clearly some, some serious themes. First of all, this hybrid idea um, that really it's not about permissioned or permissionless, but we're actually combining the two. Things are moving back and forth. I spoke about, about just this a couple days ago, um, building permission networks on top of permissionless protocols, uh, and also this idea of owned versus unowned. Why would I want to build on your technology? Why would I want to build on something that I know is going to end up furthering your business, making you wealthier, possibly at my detriment? I'd rather build on something that is unowned, that, that no one really controls. So, And I think a lot of different protocols, as they're as they are um, iterating, are going to have to figure out how to unown what they're working on really fast and get it to a point where um, it doesn't feel like there's a single company controlling it. But at the same time, there's a tension between that and SLAs and working with customers and building good UI. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this develops. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing she's pointing out and she's framing this conversation in a way saying, hey guys, it's becoming very obvious that as a application, a business, are you going to want to build on something that you're inherently making the rich VCs that are at the bottom that started that pyramid proof of stake where the rich get richer type of architecture? As a business, do you want to be building on top of another business where you're making, you know, a one group of people rich? Or do you want to be building on top of an open source protocol where you're building and becoming a part of a community? When you build on top of something like Bitcoin, for example, or on top of Cadena, you're building on top of a decentralized network. So you're going to inherit all of that community love because every time when you build on top of a layer one and you make the layer one better, right? You inherently get the love from the entire community. Where on a proof of stake chain, you don't necessarily get that type of love. Again, talking about the scalability solutions, I'm curious if they fail, if they turn out not to work, all of the things in the, in the pyramid, maybe some of the other things that people are experimenting with, let's just say they don't do it. They don't solve the scalability problems. Blockchains are fundamentally unscalable. Uh, what happens then? Does everyone have to go home? Is there still a role for this technology to play? How should we sort of set our expectations? Um, so I, mean, I think what you're seeing, the applications you're seeing right now on Ethereum, for example, don't necessarily require it to scale really more than it already has. Like you're seeing, you're seeing some use cases, um, like uh, you know, and it, it may require some tricks in terms of just making these making these more efficient, like doing some trade matching off chain. Um, but you see, you see a lot of, and this, this is in sort of the broad category of like decentralized finance. Um, very often you have these these kinds of uh, applications that don't require very frequent updates. Um, like for example, one one example, MakerDAO, um, which is a, which is like a synthetic dollar, um, and also a way for somebody to, to get leverage on um, on ether on the uh, uh, chain right now. Like you see, you've seen 400 million dollars locked up on MakerDAO, um, and that's with Ethereum as it exists today, because these are very high dollar value transactions. People are willing to pay a fee for each transaction. There's not a lot of interaction with the contract. Um, that's the kind of use case that in a, in a future where blockchain doesn't scale, I think you'll see those those kind of very high stakes. Um, uh, decentralized finance uh, applications being really the the. But, but isn't that isn't that just what the investment banks are already doing? Why why would you do it? Why would you why would you? Yeah, what's the value add over over today? 
Well, uh, censorship resistance. Okay. Do you ever watch CNBC or CNN news and you see the left wing just coming out with some crazy off the wall stuff that you're like, you want to come through that computer and or the screen and be like, what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. When you hear people trying to argue about what people are going to actually do on Ethereum and you're like, well, you're in finance, this really ivory tower elite project where if you can't afford to spend 500 to a thousand dollars per transaction, well, I mean, Ethereum doesn't really need to scale because you know, you can just pay 500 to a thousand dollars per transaction right now. And people are going to use it because you just need a protocol that's built. That's not designed to do much besides look good and sit there. Hmm. Okay. You hear the guy at MIT. He's just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Buddy. <laughs> like logically, like somebody's going to believe that one. Sure. Okay. But, but it still means this is a technology for the wealthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this so, is a yeah. question that I can't answer because Chainweb already scales. <laughs> We're in TechNet and it already scales better okay, than so, 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 so uh, your point is, hey, that, Neha, your question is moot. Absolutely. Your question works. is moot. We've already okay. proved that it works. <laughs> okay. Okay. We should all move to, move to Chainweb. Well, that's a, that's an, yeah, that's a fair, that's an answer. Um, <laughs> so, just mic drop. All right. Okay. Just come build on top of Kadena. And I think that that's the message that the rest of the world is going to start to get, right? If you start to go back and watch, and I'm going to be pulling clips over the next couple of weeks and really hard helping you guys understand what Kadena has been building in the shadows for the last two or three years when the rest of the blockchain world has just chosen to ignore this technology. Now, maybe the rest of the world knew that pact was a few iterations away from perfection. But I think that we are getting to a point based off of everything that we're seeing from the Kadena team, community grants, DEX is getting ready to turn on, applications getting built, NFT projects, DNA, Marmalade. There's some big things that have been in the works for a really long time that the Kadena team has been skillfully crafting into perfection. And the pieces of the puzzle are all coming together. It was overwhelmingly obvious in 2019 that Kadena was superior to everything. Now things are getting ready to turn on. How long do you think it is before the rest of the world wakes up and realizes what, what the power and potential of Katana is going to be? In my future videos, I'm going to show you guys why governments, healthcare facilities, too big to fail businesses are going to fall in love with Katana because they're going to use it to make their business more money. And anytime you're making big businesses like that more money, you win and everybody wins together. Love you guys.